little air grid chat with uh, Joseph, Snakes of Russia. Hey, Joseph, hey, how are you doing? How are you doing, dude? How are you? Very good. Great to see you. Uh, we have a very good reason why we're chatting today. Uh, yeah. So depending on when you guys are watching this, this Thursday, a new Snakes of Russia signal is going to drop on air grid. Or if this is already passed, then it was November 11th. Um, and this single called My Arms Bend Back. Now, when I first heard uh, those two tracks, which make up uh, the single release, mm -hmm. I noticed, you know, underlying darkness that is kind of like the hallmark of your sound. But I felt yeah. like the melodic progression was more hopeful than, you know, <laughs> your last release carried to California in a, a swarm of bees. Is that a reflection of like, you know, recent events? You just you just became a father, I know, right? Which yeah. is a life defining moment. Congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, man. I mean, of course it is. Um, it would have to be this was written pre um this was written pre birth, but while, you know, my partner was pregnant. So it, it was it was one hundred percent like everything we do is always influenced by our what's going on around us. Um so, but at the same time, there's a there's a very like distinct like I'm trying to just kind of to make this this m music that that is is dark because it kind of makes me feel better to get it out in the music rather than like I'm not a very dark person in real life like I'm you know like oh, you I, know. I, I I you're right you know you know yeah. like I like being positive and 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 so I have to get it out somewhere um, so yeah I mean I would say that the surroundings that were happening at the time you know with sarah being pregnant and stuff like it, it has to influence it subconsciously or otherwise and then funny enough it was being mastered actually when we went into the hospital so it was kind of like it was kind of like oh wow um, yeah that was kind of a cool cool the cool timing you know it's like, like the final process of birth yeah of the trial yeah uh, yeah exactly and i could as... wow yeah. well this amazing. yeah it was it was kind of cool, and I and, and it was just sitting in my inbox, and then I finally got to listen to it, and, and it kind of yeah, it was it was great. Um, but yeah, I, I can't help but to think that there's a bit of uh, it's funny what people define hopeful, and people you know define dark because mm -hmm. there's been tracks that I define as like oh it's a, this is a little lighter, but then someone is like this is like the most dreary stuff sure. I've ever heard. So it's it's just I love that it's open to interpretation, you know. Um, and there's a few things that are different about this track. I mean, um, it, it, it was basically, I think we've talked about gear before, you know, and it's it's essentially like, at the end of the day, like I'd make music, if I had a laptop and like, a, you know, a, a, just Foley around, me, just a, 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 a room full of things, I would find a way to make music, right? I think we all would, you know, being passionate. But every once in a while, a piece of gear comes along that, that is just really just kind of inspires and immediately you, you want to dig in and get into it. And for me, it was the OB6, um, which I, which I got. Um, yeah. And I, I got a, a couple months ago and just in instantly, you know, just have having, you know, these, these like crazy awesome brass sounding patches and making that. And that's completely where the sound came from. Just me having an OB6 next to me and then being able to, you know, add some harmony because of the polyphony and, yeah, so that's like oh, at, yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. So, so that is day, a big like, thing. Is that your thing. one polyphonic synth that you use? I have a Juno 106, which I've had, which is my second synth that I've ever had, and I love it. But it's just kind of like I'm just, you know, it's its thing. It does its thing actually. Um, and I needed. I felt like I needed something, you know, um, new and something that that kind yeah. of like to inspire. Um, and and I specifically wanted that dirty brass sound. And the OB6 kind of hit everything, and it's consistently every day. It's mm -hmm. just like, wow, this thing rules. But yeah, it completely like this song is because of that. And I was kind of on a, on a path of like working on a full length, <laughs> and then I kind of wrote this, and I'm like, this is so cool. Like I I need I need people to hear this. How about we just take a quick sneak peek, just so you know, sure. know what we're talking. Sounds about. good. Yeah, sounds good. two versions of the track on that single right yeah can you can you like fill us in on version one versus version two 
Sure. Yeah. I, I, I love doing remixes. Um, and, uh, and I've been doing a bunch of remixes for other people, but I, but I actually hadn't done one for myself. So I, I also like kind of this idea of alternate versions of songs. So, um, I was, I, I just, I, on a whim, I was just like, what happens if, if I make this, the other, the B-side for this um, kind of an alternate version of the song? So it kind of just, I took the stems and just kind of just ran with it and, and, and it came together really fast. And so it's just mainly like an interpretation. Okay, but, but what kind of like, what different angle did you take on the second version on the B-side that you feel like you didn't have on the first one? I wanted it to to like the the first one is very like I'm gonna use tight and rigid, but but mm -hmm. I, I just very whereas the the second version is just wide and open and expanse and and I and I and I wanted it to feel like a, like almost like a different song because it kind of is. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. kind of it's all the same elements. Like it's just I used a lot of granular and. Mm -hmm. Um, all the elements are there, but it's a completely different feel. It's almost, if it weren't for the same key and tempo, it might almost be a different song. We, I, I love reverb, you know, so I, I you yeah, know. You do. I, yeah, yeah, you know, and and like, but I love like short reverbs too, right? So I feel like uh -huh. the first one has a lot of room reverb and, and room spaces and stuff. And the second one just has ridiculous, you know, nine second tails. Was mm -hmm. there like a sensual vision that mm -hmm. you brought to the table or into the studio, you know, that just kind of made this a, a complete release or is it just kind of like just uh, uh you know a reflection of the current state of yours like uh, what was the intention behind it? it it's actually a little bit of like a little bit of the first ver the regular version is kind of like this direction that i've been going down for a while and then the second version it's almost like this direction like that I'm, I'm, I'm heading towards and and in the perfect world <laughs> um, the next thing I do would just be those two things together you know like I, I I enjoy both of those things I enjoy like I just like space right like going back to reverb so I think I like so big spaces and small spaces and trying to make those exist at the same time and and so I think the intention was like I've said what I what I needed to say with this with a single but but I feel like it should have another song with it like you know um but at the same time I want it to feel cohesive at the first so let me try this remix idea mm -hmm. and then I'm, and I don't want it to just I want it to be a, a departure completely like a rework or, or just a different version of this song so I think that was the intention to kind of make two things that could hang together that were like the same but but could be you know because I'm sure some people might favor the second one over the first one and I think I'm always trying to push it darker because there's a, there's a, like, because it's really, it's interesting to define what that is because darker in terms of music production could mean something different to everybody. Like, you know, um, it might mean like, it might be lean more on sound design or it might mean like on your, on your, you know, your, your note choices or your chord choices or what key you're in or, or, or tempo there's so many variables for that so I'm still trying to figure that out like what it means to me and and certainly dissonance you know I, I, mm -hmm. I, I like things and imperfections like I don't I don't like things to be perfect at, at, at all I like things to be um, I heard an expression recently ah uh, and I'm forgetting it and it's so valid to this. Bobby Sox? Yes, that's a, that's yes, exactly it. I knew yes, it. Exactly. And, and it's incredible that like I had been kind of like n n nurturing that without realizing it and just kind of like, you know, so that, that, so it's I'm getting to the point of just like, it kind of like dark could mean anything to um, a, a lot of different people, but it also could mean a lot of things to the time of, 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 the, of your life when you write that. And, and if I look at music that I did when, when I was, not so happy um that darkness is it's 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 like a different it's a different kind of thing it's it's right. it's more of a um a, like so i'm trying to just just constantly push that envelope of like of like how how dark can i get this and, and different ways to do that and to be, be it production techniques or or core choices or interval choices so um it's always evolving you know so but but that ep that the the, the um 
I came uh, California and Swarm of Easy P. Like, like that. That's some of my favorite work because I think I kind of had tapped into that darkness a little bit, and I'm trying to keep doing that. But in the meantime, if something comes up that's not as dark, but it still feels like it, it kind of tugs at something inside me, then by all means, like I need to put that out to the world. You know, it's interesting to to hear what things make people uncomfortable like i'm all i'm so interested in what things make people uncomfortable within music you know and like you know but still have the music be be i'm going to use the term well received but but like because it's easy to think about just you, know, you you can obviously make a song that'll turn people off and that's but to have a song that turns people off but but doesn't turn people off just makes people slightly uncomfortable but they're intrigued Right, <laughs> that right. to me is interesting. Right. That's what's interesting to me, and and there's a lot of different ways I like to approach that with like you know stuff, you know, um, detuning things and being you know and stuff again the wabi sabi things not being perfect. And yeah. and I think that also explains why um, you know you always have this little thing attached to your uh, records that says mastered to tape. Yeah. And tape, yeah. you know, we associate tape with like a slight wobbliness, you know, this is yeah. wow and flutter, kind of like, you know, this breathing yeah. room. That it just adds this imperfect digital world, right? So it kind of seals yeah. the deal at the end with that wobby sobby intention at the very last step. So I think that is something that people could really like take away, you know, also fellow producers who are looking for their sound. When you have a driving mm -hmm. intention like you, Joseph, um, you have to play it out all the way. You have yeah, to find completely. from A to Z, every step along the way, how can I, you know, turn that intention into a step that yeah, keeps moving along it. so that at the end, it's just the accumulation of that intention, right? Yeah. And you really get to yeah. front. Everybody kind of has their thing that they're, that it's like, you know, there's some guitar players that are virtu you know, virtuosos and, and, and this person is great with this. I think my thing is that like, um, I'm good at getting things from A to B. So so I can come up with this concept, this super high concept thing of like, oh, what happens if I made electronic music that sounds like doom metal? And then, so I can follow <laughs> that all the way through. Um, but, but the important thing is that like, it's all a journey. So like, I think there's a couple of things that have been releasing that kind of hint on that. So I'm still kind of searching, but along the way, I'm releasing this stuff and hopefully other people are kind of enjoying my journey into it. Um, and then I don't know if I'll ever get there to try to, you know, find that thing that I'm looking for, but like the, the journey's so fun and it's kind of like, I want to document the journey and that's what these singles are and that's what these records are. It's just kind of a documentation of me coming up with this crazy high concept idea in my head and then trying to trying to get there and then because it's the other way around would yeah. be like just people when when I mean we all know like like artists that lot have locked themselves in in years you know in a studio for 10 years and then they they release this like complete masterpiece and that's great too um but for me I I need I need there to be gradual steps in the process I love what you said in the in the first interview with did it's more important that you release. It's more important yeah. that you put your voice out there. Exactly. And looking for that mm -hmm. perfection that might never happen. And then yeah. in the meantime, you have not shared your voice. So I think yeah. that is exactly so important, so valuable. It's very important. It's very important. Like when I have people that hit me up for advice and stuff, like it's almost the thing I stress the most. Like mm -hmm. I know that it takes a lot to get out that first thing or even the second thing, but like you'll grow so much more if it's mm -hmm. a constant, if you're just doing that and rather than just waiting for this, you know, and I, I was guilty of that for years. And that's, a, you know, it's very important. It's, you know, because it's like, but it goes back to this being a journey and it's all like, you know, um, and you're right. You can, I, I look back at stuff and I'm like, would I have done that differently now? Absolutely. But that's, it's a docu it's a piece of time, you know, and, and, and the alternative was, I could have held on to this music and we probably wouldn't be having this conversation. And, exactly. and you know, so, so that's the exactly. thing. It's kind of, I think it's better to get stuff into the world and, and then kind of, you know, have people along for the ride. So I kind of, that's what I'm thankful that people are along for the ride. It's awesome. You went from passion to purpose with music, right? Yeah. Which I think is just mind blowing because more people need to understand kind of like, um, how a passion can become a purpose yeah. and once you realize yeah. that just open the doors right
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a big difference. It's a huge difference, but yet a really small difference. You know, it's a very like because like you can't every for everyone else it's different. It's kind of like to define what the difference of those two things are. For me, it was just kind of like you know, it it went from a point of like passion. It's like I'm gonna you know just being completely unrealistic about your goals and 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 not taking care of the things that you need to take care of mm-hmm. because you're just so on this on this like relentless journey and then there's just a moment to realize that like y- you kind of need to take care of yourself and and build a life around this purpose and then and then essentially just like you know it just for me that was a lot of different things that was that, that was you know shouldering more responsibilities and 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 you know starting a family and stuff and and now it's just like I, I have like no it's it's it, like whereas like where a passion for me would be like I'm just gonna lock myself in here for for three years and not eat or take care of myself and and you know it, so passion and purpose mean a lot of things to different people um, for me I know what they were and making that distinction really just made the difference for every, for me you know and most people I talk to about this concept the same they have the same ideas or the same thoughts you know. I think it comes down to just one phrase and the phrase is just like I would probably be doing it anyway like I would be doing it anyway like if I had an audience or not I'd just be doing it anyway and I think if you can answer that question like would you be doing it anyway that then you're kind of in tune with what your pa- what your purpose absolutely. is what is your passion you know like so you know yeah absolutely anyway. yeah so um we close with that so we have snakes of russia my arms bend back the new single out of Aerogrid records it's available as of november 11th on all the streaming platforms and on bandcamp please go check it out support snakes of russia uh, on his journey well joseph thank you so much for taking the time and uh i'm super grateful that you're on this journey with us and we're on this journey with you and uh, likewise man yeah keep it going my friend absolutely man it was a great conversation thank you for having me